Good morning, church. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Colleen, and it is so wonderful to have you in worship with us this morning here online. We want to invite you to let us know that you're here. So find a comment box, open it up, uh, put some names in there, the people that are worshiping there with you. If you can't find the comment box, uh, find an email and let us know. We are tracking this in the office, and we would love it if you would let us know that you're with us today. If this is your first time in worship with us at First Methodist Colleen, we want to welcome you. And we're so glad that you found your way to this service today. Uh, we pray that God has a special word for you. We have a couple of announcements. Today is exciting because we kick off summer community groups. We have 11 new small groups starting this week. We have 68 different people participating in that. Uh, that means we have 11 small group leaders. I wanna thank them for being courageous and trying something new. Some of these small group leaders, this is the first time that they have done this. And so I'm excited about something new that we're starting these community groups and look forward to seeing what God has in store for all of these conversations over the next 11 weeks. Ad Council is asking for your help. We need some help as we look to re-enter into in-person worship. And so in Friday's email newsletter, there was a survey. So please, if you haven't already, go back and find that email newsletter, find the link to the survey and fill that out for us. Uh, if all goes well, and we hope it does, uh, we'll be back and offering in-person worship on July 5th. All right, on July 5th. Uh, we will continue online worship through all of this. So uh, we won't stop uh, online worship on July 5th, uh, but we'll be offering both at the same time. And then today is Communion Sunday. So at the end of our service today, if you feel comfortable, uh, you are invited to join us for our online communion service. Uh, so gather some bread, gather some juice, and we hope that you participate with us here at the end of our service. My friends, let's uh, begin our service with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for creating this space for us to worship with you today. We ask that you speak to us here now in this time, that we may hear a word from you. God, we thank you that we're able to bring you our praise even online. Um, even as we are not together in person, we are connected as a body of Christ. And so we thank you for that today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hi, everybody. Have you signed up for VBS yet? We're going to have a virtual VBS. It's going to be a blast, and you've never seen anything like it. Today I was listening to the radio, which I know is kind of old fashioned, and a portion came on called StoryCorps. And it was a father talking to his young son, somewhere around eight years old. And he was quoting a proverb and uh, found out this proverb actually takes root in uh, Ecclesiastes. And it's, a, it's an old, old Yiddish proverb. And uh, it goes, babies are born with their fists closed because that's where they hold their gifts. And as they grow and their hands learn to unfold, that's how they're gonna share their gifts with the world. And his, the father's wish for his son, he said, I wanna see you live with your hands unfolded. Well, that's a beautiful thought. What if we live our lives with our hands unfolded, receiving the word of God, sharing our gifts with those around us, sharing our love, instead of going around with our fists tight. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful week. I look forward to seeing y'all in BBS. And why don't we go ahead and say our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us to share our gifts, share our love with those around us. In your name we pray.
Amen. Father, we pray for the brokenness in our world, that we can see your light um, in the pieces. Pray for healing for those that are sick, justice for the oppressed, and peace for the uncertain. Lord, be with us as we continue to wait until we can be safely together again. And as we pray in the way that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church, thank you for your faithful continued giving. Uh, just to remind you that we have offering plates in several different places right now. Uh, one is online. You can set up your automatic payments or give uh, from your bank to the church online. Uh, there's also a drop box outside of the office and anytime you can come and safely uh, drop that in the, in the drop box or you can uh, mail us an offering to the office. So again, thank you. Uh, the work of Christ continues, even though we're not in person right now. So friends, let's pray for our offering. God, we thank you for all that you have given to us. And we pray as we give back to you now that we do so with an offering heart, a heart that wishes to connect to your spirit's work here in this world today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Remember 
This is my wife, Gabrielle. Good morning, church members. With so many newsworthy events happening in the world today, my wife and I have the following question. Do you believe? Do you believe this? It is a question that every person must answer. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Is Jesus the object of your faith? Not faith is a ritual, not faith as in sacrifice, not faith in morals, not faith in yourself. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you to free you from guilt and judgment of your sins? Do you believe that he rose from the grave, breaking the power of death and making a way for you to have eternal life in heaven? If so, you may express your faith by praying through him to our Father. Thank you for sharing this inspired moment of faith with us. God bless you. Good morning. Um, I'm Kelly Friddle. I'm Taylor Jones. And today we want to say how thankful we've been and how we've seen God over the last several weeks. Um, and I just want to say that the outpouring of love from the church and in my own uh, small community has been amazing on um, helping with the the seniors since Taylor graduated mm -hmm. and basically it's just the love that I didn't expect um, it's it's just coming out from everywhere and you know the sun shining and what more can we ask from God's love I am thankful for all the love and appreciation and cards that I've gotten from people that I wasn't even sure like knew and I just want to say thank you to everyone. I've seen God through the notes that I've gotten written to me by talking to my friends and especially my Jesus friends right now because they are a massive support system and I love them. Have a good morning. Have a good morning. Bye. Bye. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 to 7, and it reads, My goal is that their hearts would be encouraged and united together in love so that they might have all the riches of assurance that come with understanding so that they might have the knowledge of the secret plan of God, namely Christ. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in him. I'm telling you this so that no one deceives you with convincing arguments, because even though I am absent physically, I'm with you in spirit. I'm happy to see the discipline and stability of your faith in Christ. So live in Christ Jesus the Lord in the same way as you received him. Be rooted and built up in him, be established in faith and overflow with thanksgiving, just as you were taught. These are God's words for God's people. As we begin our message this morning, let us pray. God, we ask that you speak to us now, not through a pastor, not through some notes, but God, speak to us through your Holy Spirit. We claim that you are here, present with us now, and we open up our hearts and our minds for your guidance. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, I needed to do some listening this week. Uh, I don't think this will come as a shock to many of you, uh, but I'm a white pastor. And as a white pastor with a deep desire to say some words today about the racial tensions in our country, um, I reached out to some of you. I reached out to some of our congregation, uh, those that are not white male pastors, to share some feedback, to share some words, to, to help me uh, get a better sense of where we have been the last couple of weeks and so uh, the sermon today, as you sit in your couch and you sit on your table, sit next to your table, <laughs> and you drink your coffee, uh, I, I pray 
that some of this is a little uncomfortable for you. I pray that we are all challenged in this. The gospel, friends, is revolutionary. The gospel is not to simply pat us on the back and say you're doing a good job. Sometimes the gospel needs to talk to us and correct us and change us. So I heard from Ursula. Ursula taught me something about travel chicken. I'll say that again, travel chicken. Now, I grew up watching baseball, and so I knew about the famous chicken. In fact, I think I stood in line for three hours once to get the autograph of the famous chicken. Ursula taught me about travel chicken. It was a family tradition of hers. And when she was dating Michael, who's now her husband, and he was heading across the country to California to see Rebecca, she made him a travel chicken. And the family wondered what that was. And Ursula said, it's a family tradition. It's just something we do. And she began to try and learn what that was about. You see, her grandmother used to make her mother travel chicken because this was the time of Jim Crow laws. And if you were going to travel many hours or some great distance, you weren't sure if you went into a town that you would be able to find a place to eat. You may not be welcome there. And so you needed to prepare for that. And that's what a travel chicken is. I needed to hear about travel chickens this week because I have never needed a travel chicken. I've never worried that walking in a neighborhood might raise suspicion that people might get a camera out and begin to film me. I had another person respond to me and in reading her response, I've never had to worry about my two sons. And I've never had to worry about them getting hurt because they're white. I needed to hear about the travel chicken today. Thank you, Ursula. Several weeks ago, uh, I had decided that we were changing the series for the summer. The things just didn't quite fit with not being in person. So we picked growing seasons. Uh, we were encouraged with the idea that this is a time of growth. It's a time to change. And so today kicks off the, the summer community groups. It kicks off this new series about growing. The topic today is, am I changing? I sense that the spirit is causing change today. I sense that the spirit is bringing change to our systems and to our country. And in a sense, I can hear the words of John the Baptist saying, repent for the kingdom of God is near and through the difficult protests and the difficult fighting I believe that we're seeing a movement of the spirit towards something that looks more like the kingdom of God. Friends, it's time to change. It's time to change. It's time to repent. And all over this country, this morning, nervous pastors are claiming that racism is a sin and that we're in a crisis. The problem with that is that we've been in a crisis for a long, long time, and many of us are just spending the last week or two seeing and knowing and learning more about this crisis. The foundation of our country was 
on the back of slavery. And then we moved into Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow laws where we needed, where families needed travel chickens, where some churches in the South had ushers situated in the back of the sanctuary to remove and ask away non-white attendees. Today's crisis, there are many, but today's crisis includes mass incarceration in a jail system, a prison system uh, that is unequitable and unfair to our black neighbors. The NAACP, they share that drug use is the same between white populations and black populations. Drug use is the same, the same percentage. However, drug incarceration is six times, six times higher for black populations. There's a system that needs change. And it starts with me saying, I'm part of that system. I'm part of a system that needs to change. And I would hope that most of you would not call me a racist. I don't believe you sitting at home are a racist. I've never been a member of a white supremacist group. I also have several friends that are of another race people that I call friends. But this is not the time to say, well, this isn't about me. I'm not a racist. I don't need to think about these things. I think instead it's a time for the, the place of courage is to claim that we live in a system that is racist and to claim that I have benefited from that system. It's time to change. And friends, I think all of us have a part to play in that change. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I spent much longer working on this sermon, and I probably wrote about 20 sermons for you this morning. And I don't have four hours. So today I just want to look at two encouragements. Two encouragements as I look through all of the information and things that you and I could share today. I caught a presentation from Austin Presbyterian Seminary. It was an interview with Reverend William Lamar. And his encouragement was for us to be careful and to speak to that place where we simply want to call for peace. We might say things like, at this moment of crisis, we just need to love God. If people would just love each other. And, and friends, that's incredibly reasonable. And it is certainly true. But it's not true peace if our neighbor is still in pain. And so for the goal of this last week, the goal of the, the protests, the goal of the hard conversations, the goal is not to get back to normal. It's not to simply have those things stop so that we can bring order back into our society. The movement and the goal of the spirit right now is not to get us back to the status quo. But friends, we serve, we serve a God of justice, not a God that wants to get us back into the status quo and just get everybody quiet again so we can go on with our lives, but a God of justice who stands with the needs stands with those who need justice. 
not simply just restores order. Reverend Lamar said that Jesus's agenda is not the status quo, getting things back to normal. You know, he wasn't crucified because he told everyone that things were okay, but he was crucified because he was ushering in deep change in the society. He was ushering in equality for all in a kingdom that included everyone, including the Samaritan, including the tax collector, including the ignored woman at the well. We need to be careful with what we want right now. Are we standing alongside a God of justice or do we just simply want things to get back into order? Second encouragement, I had several respondents, several members that wrote back to me uh, speaking about listening, but specifically I wanna mention something that Gwen shared with me. She said that our work right now is to listen to their pain, is to listen to their pain. In fact, she said, they need to be, we need to nurse them up. People are wounded. Nurse them up. People are wounded. Our hard job right now is to listen. As a white, privileged pastor, my work is to listen. And listening to pain is hard. Why is listening so hard? Because we're we're always looking for reasons to walk away from the pain. We're looking for reasons to discount a message. We're looking for reasons to discount their needs. For instance, for instance, along with the protests, along with the, the marches, along with the deep, powerful speeches, there have been riots and there has been looting. We don't have time this morning to get into where that's coming from as some of it is coming from professional agitators, but there is rioting and there is looting. And we need to be careful not to walk away because it's getting violent. We need to be careful not to walk away from the message that is trying to be shared because we can see something that's going deeply wrong. Rioting and looting is not part of God's will, but we can't walk away. We can't disengage from the conversation just because we can look at one thing and say, well, they're doing that, that means the whole movement is violent and we don't have to listen anymore. We'll go back to our lives. For instance, along with the protests, there have, sent, there have been some terrible, hateful things directed at police officers. Some things that have been said that are not part of God's will. And I know that there are amazing police officers. Our church has the privilege of being served by an amazing police officer each Sunday. We have many close friends that are uh, police officers and servants, and we know that they are uh, very true-hearted and incredible in their work. But we also know that that is another system that needs change. And so we're not allowed to discount someone that carries a Black Lives Matter sign because we know some good friends that are good police officers. We're not allowed to disengage and say, oh, they don't like police officers at all, and so we don't have to listen to them anymore. We can go about our lives. But friends, it's hard when we sit and listen in the middle of tension the tension of listening to a protester when there is rioting and there is looting, the tension of knowing that the policing system needs change in the middle of knowing that many of them are good, 
good, caring people. We can say both, we love police officers and black lives matter. We can sit in that tension, but it's hard. And it's easier to get offended and to walk away and to stop listening. But I wanna encourage you today to listen. Maybe something you've heard has upset you in the message today. And you think, oh, that preacher's just saying we're racists. And don't look for a reason to disengage from the conversation. Don't look for a reason to turn your back, to get upset, but stay engaged and listen. Part of listening, I learned something this week. Um, one of my uh, favorites in the CDC that I got to know when I first got here two and a half years ago uh, is Sally. Uh, Sally's a long time loved teacher in our CDC. And she wrote me back that part of our job in this moment is to mourn with those who mourn. To mourn with those who mourn. There's something about having empathy, about seeing the heart of someone else and the pain that they're in, and then coming alongside and listening and asking how we can help without the answers. And she reminded me of Romans 12, because until we mourn with others, we can't help them. We can't help ourselves. We can't change. So I wanna close this message today reading a pretty good section of Romans 12. And as I think about things that you and I could do this week, things that you and I can challenge each other to do this week, maybe this could be part of it, to simply read this scripture once a day. Let these words soak into our spirit. Let us listen to these words. Romans 12, beginning in verse 9 to the end of the chapter. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, I'm praying for us, and I'm praying for you this week. As you're invited to listen, stay engaged with the conversation. Ask questions and start from wherever you're starting today. Knowing that it's okay 
if we make mistakes. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your message. We thank you for listening, and we pray that before we speak, we would be quick to listen, to see others with the eyes that you see them with, not to discount people, but to be with them and to help. That, God, it would be an honor and a joy to join you here in Colleen to help build the kingdom of God that you desire for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, friends. Jesus met in the upper room with his disciples, with his closest friends, the ones that he had invited to learn about this deep change that he was bringing into the world. And he was going to celebrate with them a traditional Seder meal, a meal that they would all know by heart. They would know each step. They would have done this many times before. But in this meal, Jesus changed some things. When it came time to share the bread, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, now, this bread, it's to help you remember me. And so every time you eat, every time you break bread together, remember me and the things that I have taught you. And then he took one of the many cups that they would have shared that evening, and he said, now this cup, this cup is the cup of salvation, and it now symbolizes my blood. My blood that will be poured out for you and for many for the healing and the forgiveness of sins. So when you drink this, remember me. Remember how your sins have been forgiven and how you are free. So friends, today as we gather again in our living rooms, around our tables, we invite you, if you feel comfortable today, to share in this meal. And so friends, the body of Christ broken for you and for the world. And the blood of Christ shed for you, for your healing and your wholeness, not just for you, but for our whole world, 
for our cultures and for our systems. Jesus offers forgiveness and healing. Friends, I'd invite you now to share the bread and to share the juice there in your home. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for holy moments such as these, where this bread and this juice becomes for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That through this simple meal, we are reminded of our own healing and our wholeness and the gifts that you provide for us so that we might go into the world and be healing and be wholeness for this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, again, thank you for joining with us this morning for worship. It is a joy to be with you each and every Sunday, if we're in person or if we're doing a recorded video. But thank you. And friends, go now and may the hope and the joy and the peace and the love of Jesus Christ that is so true and so real and alive today, may it be with you. May it fill you up. And then find ways this week to pour out of your life into the lives of those around you that they may know the hope that we share in God. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.